So this is going to be quite an interesting video or episode if you're listening on the podcast because we're going to be talking about why you don't necessarily have to think positive in order to feel that way or to feel joy, love, peace, contentment in your life. This is going to be extremely contradicting and paradoxical really at the end of the day because what I'm about to try to explain can't really be understood logically. Um, our mind will try to play games with us and play tricks on us to make us think that we need to continually think in order to get what we want in life. But how often does overthinking actually help you? Just really contemplate on that and just flip through all the scenarios in which overthinking has actually brought you something worthwhile in life or brought you more joy or more peace or more love. It's usually quite the opposite. And so if you haven't watched my other videos, I really recommend that you do so in order to get a full comprehensive view of what will be discussed in this video. But if you don't know any context, you'll still be able to grasp uh, this understanding as well. So the first thing is most people believe that we need to think in order to be happy in some way, shape or form. But instead of me trying to explain how that may or may not be true, I'll just ask you a question and then you can kind of see for yourself. And that's my favorite way of demonstrating, I guess, in terms of how we can achieve this higher level of peace or more joy, more love in our lives. So the question is this, when you were happiest or most joyful in your life, what were you thinking exactly during that time? Just flip back through your memory and think about when you were happiest. You probably have a memory now. So pay attention to exactly what was the inner dialogue in your mind. Was there any? And when you start to really break down that memory, you might realize that there wasn't any dialogue going on in your mind. When you were the happiest, when you were with your friends or family, or when you were with a group of people that you loved, whatever you were doing at that time, you probably didn't really have very many thoughts or any thinking going on. And if you did, it might've been things like, I'm so happy, or I'm so grateful. But to that, I'll ask, did you feel that way after you had that thought, or did you feel grateful and happy before you even had that thought? And that right there is the key that we can feel positive emotions without thinking or before we even have a thought. And actually more times than not, we are our happiest, most content. We are most in, in, form of, in terms of love. We feel most at peace when we're not thinking. And not thinking doesn't necessarily mean no thoughts though. It means that we're not thinking about our thoughts. Thoughts may come in, but they pass and go, and there's really not much attachment to them. Uh, same with the body. If you really want food, whatever you consume, to go and pass through the body, whatever stays in your system will cause indigestion and disease will kind of follow suit afterwards. And so our, our minds are the same way. Whatever thoughts come in, our duty is to really let them go instead of to hold on holding on to them. Uh, the more we hold on to it, the more painful it is. Same thing with, with food in our body. It's, it's the exact same way. So now with that whole thought experiment, you've probably come to see a little bit more about how the less we think, the, the more peaceful we feel um, and how overthinking can really consume us and take us away from that state. Now, a lot of people will then ask afterwards, what about positive thinking? What if I think I'm enough, I'm good enough, I am loved, I am whole, all of these things. Now, whatever I'm saying in this video is, is not right or wrong, good or bad. It's just another perspective, so to speak. And there's not, for, for example, if we're looking at a mountain, there's no one right way to observe the mountain and to enjoy its beauty. And so that's really how I want anyone who's watching this video for you to be able to see this. It's not this way is the right way. It's, it's not, um, there's no one right way. There's no one wrong way. There's none of that. And so if it helps, wonderful. If it doesn't, no big deal too. So back to the notion about positive thinking. Do we need to think those things in order to feel that way? Although it can help to say those affirmations to ourselves, it may not be entirely necessary. Um, 
so I've come across this myself and I've done a lot of those affirmations and trying to reprogram myself and to say a lot of these things constantly throughout my day. And so this kind of goes back to the notion of, do we actually need to think in order to feel positive emotions, to feel happy, to feel joy? And to that, I'll ask you the question of what emotion do you feel when you're not thinking? It's probably peace, contentment, and any of those emotions of there might be a slight bit of joy, um, some love, but really at the core, it's, it's that peace and contentment. And you might call that positivity or whatever it is, but you know, happiness, if you want to call it that can be fleeting, it comes and goes, but peace always remains and happiness can come into that space or not, but whatever, but peace doesn't necessarily have to leave. That's, that's really like a, a state of being. And so that's really all we're after is just that contentment, that peace. So with positive thinking, like I was saying before, it can help in certain instances, but do we really want to have to continually think in order to be happy or be, be peaceful? So if you're just going about your day, is the only time you really want to be happy is when you're saying, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, and constantly have to dialogue yourself. And I'm so grateful for this food. I'm so grateful for this air. I'm so grateful for, again, that's not bad, but is it necessary? And do we have to do that? And by the few thought experiments that we just did, it shows you that we don't necessarily have to think those things in order to feel that way. And so a lot of times when we're doing positive thinking, it's, it's very tiring. It's very exhausting. It feels like it's a lot of effort and it doesn't have to be that way. And so this is just another way to help you possibly be able to experience a, a little bit more joy, a little bit more peace, a little bit more love without all of that manual effort. Because those feelings, those states of being are our natural state. And it's only when we think that we get ejected out of that natural state. As soon as we think we invite anxiety, we invite fear, we invite all of these different things where it just takes away from the present moment. And when we are not thinking, we're automatically in the present. Thinking creates the past and it creates the future. And it creates that, that duality in life. But without thinking, the past doesn't exist, the future doesn't exist, and we're back right here in the present moment. And so the way to really feel those things without needing to think about them or constantly needing to uh, like commentate on it or have that inner dialogue is by realizing that thinking is the root cause of all suffering, that it's not really helpful to us and that it only takes us away from the fullness of life here and now. So once you have that realization, it's really as simple as repeating it to yourself that, oh, like I feel anxiety. I feel some sort of, you can call it a negative emotion, but it's not really necessary to label it. It's just some sort of uh, off feeling, if you want to say it like that. When you feel that, it's a trigger to remember that thinking is the root cause of all suffering. And that once you remember that you're thinking, you then immediately, you're, you can feel it physiologically that your body begins to calm down, that it realizes that it is just thinking and that you can let go of it. So that's really the process and take a few deep breaths. It really helps to ground you and to bring you back and to calm the nervous system. So take a few breaths. Remember that thinking is the root cause of all suffering and that you can let go of it and you can choose to do so and that you will be okay and that you are okay when you do so. That's really the whole process. It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. All of it, really, if you look at all the religions in the world, any spiritual masters, gurus, all of that, they're really just saying different forms of the same thing. And this is the simplest way I can explain it and what's helped me most in my life and many of the people that have read my books. Um, so try it out for yourself. See how it works. Watch this video again to really help cement the this idea, this, this practice and begin using it in real time. One of my favorite things about things being simple is that it's very easy to remember and very easy to use. And the most important thing to me is not doing this first thing in the morning, although it is important, it's how can I maintain this throughout my day? And so because it's so simple, it's very easy to remember more than other practices or anything like that. Um, although they're not bad, it's just what can we do in real time whenever we're feeling stress, whenever we're feeling anxiety or fear or regret, shame, guilt? What can we do in real time to really help let go of that? And what I was just explaining before about that two to three step process of remembering 
breathing and then choosing to let go is that you can do it anytime, anywhere, any place, and come back to the present moment and to find that peace that's always been here within you. I hope that helps and I'll see you guys in the next one.